I had them favorited against the, the New York Knicks. I, I thought they were better. I thought they were tougher against the Knicks. And that was a, an opponent for them to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Last night, I mean, look, they made life miserable. Like, the one thing you, you always know about Miami is that Eric Spoelstra is the best coach in the NBA. It's a damn shame that he has not won coach of the NBA. Right? He never won coach of the year. Coach of the year in right. NBA. And every damn, year he's Damn shame. Yeah. Damn coach shame. It should never happen. And he probably have, has the best argument as best coach in basketball. For sure. Yeah. And Jimmy Butler, once again, I mean, you're going to look at his offensive output. Poor Robert Williams. I mean, Boston's going to have to play small. They're going to play without Horford more than Robert Williams because in the first quarter, it was like, come here, whoever's guarding Robert Williams, come here for a ball screen. I'm going to get to my mini game. Life was never uncomfortable even though the Celtics were in control three quarters out of four, right? It came down to the Celtics not sustaining playing defense hard throughout the entire game. And that fourth quarter, that third quarter, when the Heat go for 46 points in the third quarter, 46 to 25, boom, difference maker in the ball game. That Jimmy does it again. Yeah, I want to talk about Butler for a second. Because and the only reason I know about this is because it was going around on social media about how, like, all these people said that Jimmy Butler was a bad signing in Miami or it wasn't going to mean anything. And when I looked, and they included me in the list, and when I looked, so I looked at the segment. And actually, Stephen A. was arguing at the time on first take the, 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 the thing that people were mad at. And in fact, the, the position I took at the time, I only know this because I watched this like a day ago or two days ago, is that <laughs> Jimmy Butler will be a significant figure in the history of the Miami Heat because... He's the kind of guy who gets you farther than you ought to go, right? He's, the, he's a Pat Riley kind of player. I'm sure when he met with Pat Riley, they were speaking each other's language in terms of effort and work and, and, and the, the, willing, the, the desire to win all the time. And he's the kind of guy who can set, make the bed for someone else to join and get you over the top. But what Butler has done, in fact, and we're going to talk about this when we get to Wembayama later on, and some of the things that have been said about him. What Butler has done is exceeded even those expectations. Like every time you think, yes, I know how good he is and what he's capable of doing, he pushes it a little farther than, than you thought was possible. So when you bring up the Bucs, it's a first-round series, but the Bucs were favored to win the whole thing by most people. But the odds, the odds had him. The analytics had him. Vegas had them as the favorites to win everything, the Bucs. So it happened in the first round because the Heat were an eight seed. But what, you're right, Jay. What an upset. And Butler was phenomenal the whole way. Then the Knicks he's supposed to beat, and he did. And now the on Celtics. A on a bum ankle. On a bum ankle. And now the Celtics. So it's one thing to have expectations and they're pitched high. You're going to outkick your coverage. It's another thing to outstrip the expectations when part of your whole brand is he's going to do better than expectations, right? Still do better than that. That's Jimmy Butler. He's unbelievable. 35 points, 20 after the half. Are we taking them for granted still? No. I, I, yo, just because you, people are favoring the Celtics doesn't mean that you're taking Jimmy Butler for granted. You're looking at the construction of the roster, and you're saying they're a really good team. Like, when, when does talent prevail? Right? Inevitably, when does talent prevail? And, and maybe it doesn't. Maybe this team continues. But, like, they are going to continue to be the underdogs in, in, in every series they're going to play in. It's just the reality of the nature. Right. And it's okay. That actually, you know, Miami Heat fans get angry at that. But I'm like, why? That plays into exactly who the hell you are. That gives you the ammunition key and the motivation that this team needs that they feed off of to keep winning. You want to continue to be the underdogs. You want to continue to be overlooked. That plays into how you keep beating teams. Jay. Yo. You stayed up last night, huh? Yeah. Okay. Why? Because I didn't know it was a reality of the nature. <laughs> nature of the reality. <laughs> the reality of the nature. The reality of the nature. Who said it can't be the reality of the nature? Hey, man, I'm just saying. Who said it can't be? <laughs> I'm just saying that you just brought back up what I said before of how people talked about the roster. Huh. And, and looking at what it what is the makeup of the roster and saying, hey, this team doesn't really have a chance because there's a... There's, uh, Jimmy Butler, then there's Bam, and then there's no hero. They don't have anything. And that conversation keeps coming up, but they keep winning. When is it to a point? When is it going to get to a point where people just be like, well, you know, they got a coach that can coach no matter what five is on the floor. 
That's essentially what I the way I look and, at and it. And a, and a real you know number one saying? superstar type Jay, guy to go yeah. with it. Can, can, when you got a coach that can coach, he's up against just like the young lady said yesterday, uh, Stacy, or not it wasn't Stacy, it was somebody, uh, Amber. Amber said yesterday, you got a coach that's gonna out coach the next guy because the next guy is a puppy. A kid. This guy, this guy's a full grown Rottweiler, right? Other guy's just a little puppy. He's gonna outsmart him. Key, there's a, a quote on the screen right now on ESPN two from Chris Mannix, who will be joining the show at 8 a.m. Eastern. Jimmy Butler is the he's Chris Maddox from SI. He's the closest thing to Kobe Bryant playing today. Gets to his spots, gets to the free throw line, gets defenders out of position with ball fakes, monster game, and a monster postseason for Butler. Is he the closest thing to Kobe in the game right now? Because people a lot of times will look at Devin Booker because of the, the complete offense and footwork and everything, but then Jimmy Butler does it on the other end of the floor too, and he, he, he has this sense that he's imposing his will on the other team. Well, Co- uh, Kobe, yeah. as Kobe got older, the pump fakes became, you know, yeah, more. pump fakes. Yeah, more. Yeah. Um, he's an older Kobe. Really, that yeah. wasn't really his necessary game, but I would say he is close to Kobe. The difference between Book and Kobe, I mean, Book and, and, and Jimmy Butler – is Jimmy Butler is essentially back to that conversation out there willing his team to victory. He's willing his team to victory, right? We saw against the, the Knicks when he wasn't playing, Jay, they lost. I mean, it's just the reality. Yeah, Came right. back, they won. I, I, and, and he balled in the process. So, I mean, look, you can compare guys. That you always want to compare people and look to see who's the closest or who reminds you of somebody. I think Jimmy Butler reminds me of Jimmy Butler. That's the way that I view it. Kobe's offensive skill combined with athleticism is very different than Jimmy Butler. Like, their games are very different. So, like, the will or drive, those are aspects that, okay, that, that's one attribute of Kobe, Michael, some like some other players who have that. that any player that has a maniacal-type mentality, the you right can word, pair yeah. to but Jimmy wait, Jay, Butler. But, Jay, the, but the not, games are not the same. Right, right but I, I get that. I get it. But, yeah, but you know, like people flippantly like no, but what oh, he said, Kobe, but, but, like, not, but what Chris said, what Chris Mannix said, is, well, we're gonna bring Chris on to tell yeah, us. Yeah, no doubt, but, but 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 the but the quote, the, it's a quote. We have the Twitter quote. the The quote is that he's look. Jimmy Butler is the closest thing to Kobe. He's not saying his game is identical to Kobe's. So if you disagree with that, I do. Who's disagree. closer to Kobe in the game today? As an overall package, who's closer? I don't know to if we Kobe. have a player a player in the game closer to Kobe today. So then he would be the closest. So you would well, agree I, with I the statement. I, but I don't know. I don't agree no one with the is, So no I, I one is at Jimmy, all like Kobe Bryant? Jimmy Bryant's? Butler's game does not remind me of Kobe Bryant's. Okay. So, so like, I, I, I don't no know. If there, I just said I don't know if there's a player in the game that reminds me of Kobe today. There are aspects well, of players' games. That, that I'm like, okay, like that aspect looks like Kobe. But like Kobe was different. No, I, I understand. But when you say closest to, you're not saying he's as good or it's exactly the same or even super similar. You're just saying of everyone around now, he is the For example... In, 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 I like the fact that you mesh two different guys, right, or three different guys to come up with a comp. But, like, in boxing, it might be I see Terrence Crawford when he's up and coming. He does certain things that remind me of Pernell Whitaker, but also Marvin Hagler. But, also, and, but if someone were to say who's the closest to Pernell Whitaker or Marvin Hagler, I'd just pick a guy who's the closest, even if he's not identical. Okay. I, I think Jimmy Butler, given his two-way play, given the things that Maddox brought up, and given his maniacal is the right word, and the position he plays, I would agree with the statement. Probably closer to Kobe than anyone else at the moment. How so? Give me, give me more descriptive detail. Well, we'll, we'll talk about this coming I back. I mean, for the reasons I just said. All right, look, Micah Parsons, right? I say he's he Where's reminds, he gonna show up he reminds me more of <laughs> Lawrence Taylor than anyone since Lawrence Taylor. And if you disagree, tell me who reminds you more of Lawrence Taylor. Doesn't, I'm not saying Micah Parsons is good as Lawrence Taylor. I'm saying... He reminds me the most of him. And if you disagree, then tell me who reminds you more of him. So I get it about Jimmy Butler. But if you disagree with the basic statement, then someone out of the entire pool of NBA players is the closest to Kobe or must remind you the most of Kobe. So who is that guy if it's not Jimmy Butler? That, and, and so if you don't come up with another name, you might say, so offensively, well, even though it's not a perfect comparison, like it does. Devin, offensively for Kobe, that's Devin Booker. Devin Booker, That agreed. reminds me more agreed. of Kobe than, yeah. than Jimmy Butler would. Kobe Bryant offensively. Right, but then you, you but use then Devin the word, Booker doesn't bring that mentality defensively, okay? 
So like the, the the defensive mindset, or you talk about the maniacalness, like of, maniacal is the word. Yes, yeah. that, that's the word. Like yeah. that that's a common trait that reminds you of the MJ's, that reminds you of the Kobe Bryant's. It's like I am willing to do whatever the hell it takes to get our team over the hump. Like that's the trait. It's it's not it's not so much like because people just go to on the court. Well, he makes mid range jumpers. I'm like, well, there's. A lot of NBA guys are making that's mid-range what I jumpers. Just said, Jay, like, or it's like he's defensively this. I'm like, oh, that's, but but there aren't a lot of guys who do that at this level when it matters most, and that's another key element, right? A two-way player, maniacal on defense, who does certain things on offense. Who, by the way, is also around the same height, plays the same position, and goes off in the playoffs. And you can trust in crunch time. I think when you add it all up. MJ, it reminds, for whatever reason, the, the polish of it is not like what Kobe's was to me. It reminds me a little more of MJ, but obviously See, not but the pitched offensive as skill sets of both MJ and Kobe were way more polished, where Jimmy's more rugged. Yeah, of course. Right? Like, Jimmy's more of a bruiser with the way he plays, where there's more finesse with those other two. Whatever the case may be, this is the dude that the Celtics now have to get by. And whereas the, the, the Heat have continued to kind of outstrip expectations in these playoffs. The Celtics have made things difficult for themselves, right? Are we concerned about the Celtics We've now? been concerned about the Celtics. Joe Missoula, however, I think he took a page out of Budenholzer's uh, playbook. He saves those timeouts. So, you know, going forward, they get extra timeouts, right? It's like rollover or no? Do they, Jay? I don't know what the rule is. Joe Missoula, Celtics head coach, about the preparation for game one. You said they played harder than you in the third quarter. That's what they do. They play harder than their opponent. How are you guys unprepared for that? And we, we were prepared. We played harder than them in the first half, and then they outplayed us for one quarter. So we were prepared for it. We had the right mindset heading into the game. But that, that, no, 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 we had the right mindset heading into the game. We played harder than they did, and we were prepared, and we did a great job. The made all the difference, right? It did, but we were prepared, and then we let go of the rope. And so there's two storylines here. It's one, we were ready to play, and we had a great job executing on both ends of the floor in the first half, and it's about the consistency of they're going to continue to play. And so we have to be prepared um, for when we do outplay them that they're going to respond and we have to respond. And so we were prepared. We just let go of the rope. Yeah, why did you let go of the rope? I don't know. It's a great question. I mean, I, I agree with what Joe said. The, the, you never question Boston's talent. You question their ability to maintain a high-level sense of urgency on the defensive end. Like, it, it's – they can score. They can get to the rack. They play drive and kick. That's their style in which they play. When they knock down shots at a high clip, one of the best teams in the NBA – you just question, and the common theme we've been talking about with the Celtics is who are they consistently on the defensive end? Who are they? Are they giving you maximum effort, optimal effort sustained throughout the course of the game? And just like Joe Mazzulla said, they let go of the rope in the third quarter, and that's when Miami blitz them. You don't question that about Miami. You don't question them about their ability to sustain a high defensive effort throughout the course of the game. That's who the hell they are. That's their culture. They keep coming. You knock them in the mouth, okay, bloody lip, bloody tongue, don't matter. They don't get up. They keep fighting. You question about when Boston gets knocked down, will they get up? And look, for me, the one thing, the biggest point, the biggest takeaway from last night, this team goes as Jason Tatum goes. There's no way in hell. Jason Tatum can get four shots in the second half. Yeah. It cannot happen. Key coming off a 51-point game seven, game at home, their first game against a team that they've met three out of the past four years in the Eastern Conference Finals that they have a rival with. Jason Tatum, who had 18 points in the opening quarter, cannot have four shots in the second half. And people today are going to try to talk about Joe Mazzulla and I love Jason Tatum. I love him. He is like a family member to me. And his son, Deuce, I, the whole, he cannot allow himself to take four shots in the second half. He has to demand it because they go the way Jason Tatum goes. He yeah, can't. I, I hear you, Jay. It's the reality of the nature, you know? It's the reality, reality of, the of the nature. nature key. That's reality it. Of the nature. Reality By the way, of the nature, they, we, we showed stats on ESPN, too, as you were talking, Jay, about what the third quarter looked like for the Celtics and Heat. 
And actually, those numbers don't look bad for the Celtics, right? They played, and uh, th- those numbers are like perfectly okay. The assist to turnover ratio, four to four, not good. But everything else, three of eight from the from three, forty five percent from the field, nine of twenty field goals, 25, 25 points. That's like a kind of a standard issue quarter. But look at the Heat, well, the number, what, the, because that what that suggests is on offense, the Celtics were okay, not great. On defense, they gave up a whole lot. Well, the thing, the number that you don't see on that list on ESPN2 is turnovers. Well, four. Four four turnovers to four assists. Yeah, I, I, I understand. But look, ten turnovers in the second half. Yep. Right? Like, that's a, taking care of the ball. We talked about denying wings, pressuring the ball. Those are little things where you feel like they just take their foot off the gas and they get sloppy. Yeah. Yep. The Celtics. You and it's the sloppy. wrong team to get sloppy against. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.